Now, Leah, you mentioned something that a lot of people ask me about when it comes to HRV biofeedback. And this term is thrown out there, and I've heard it used you know, correctly and incorrectly. And I know that you know, obviously, what this is, and you know the correct definition, and you've studied it. What is this term of resonance frequency? What does that mean? How do we determine that number? And why is that even important for us? Ah, it is so important. And in so many ways, I think we're all trying to determine our what creates resonance beyond just breathing, which you Mm. and I can talk about. But when we breathe at a specific rate that our heart rate and our breathing rate, our respiration rate coincide, it amplifies our heart rhythms and it creates what's called 0.1 hertz uh, in the heart. And what's really interesting is via the vagus nerve, which starts in the midbrain, innervated through the heart and goes to the gut, is that 0.1 hertz troubles. It will, it will impact the gut. It will also impact the brain. And so mm-hmm. Evgeny Vashilo, uh, who was my mentor at Rutgers, um, and uh, his wife actually looked at what happens when people breathe at their resonant frequency, looking at MRIs of brains, and they see 0.1 hertz pop up. Mm-hmm. throughout different areas of the brain. It almost gives me goosebumps to think about. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so the 0.1 hertz is, some people will even consider it a frequency associated with flow. It's a parasympathetic mm-hmm. dominant state, open receptiveness, not necessarily just calm, but it puts you at your baseline self for full aptitude. And so many people, Jay, have this idea that performance enhancement means pushing themselves. Mm -hmm. And so much about resonant frequency is about authenticity, Mm -hmm. about finding that rate of breathing that's authentic to you and allows you to be at your full range of self. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're really striving to do. There are different rates for different people, oftentimes based on height and weight. Um, You know, yours may be 6.0, mine may be 5.7. It doesn't matter. There is no better, there's no better rate for one person. It's just creating that 0.1 hertz throughout the system. Now, mm-hmm. what else is interesting is we can breathe at resonant frequency and essentially put our system into a parasympathetic state. And that's what you're honing by practicing 20 minutes twice a day, the ability to activate that parasympathetic state on demand, as well as be in parasympathetic dominance much more than sympathetic dominance. But you can also look at building an ecosystem outside of you that creates resonance. If I showed you the colors in my office, it's no chance that that those are calming colors. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, You know, people will choose to live in demographic places, moving from Greenwich to California, New York to Costa Rica, uh, you know, New Jersey to Florida, being by the water, they can feel is puts them in a state of resonance. So it's really interesting to start to change how you live your life a little bit according to what puts you into resonance, which leads me to a little story. Yes, <laughs> please know, do tell. You know I love to track HRV. Mm-hmm. And and uh, um, I monitored my HRV for a two-week period, and I looked at the peaks and troughs, trying to design an ecosystem mm-hmm. that started my day with the most robust HRV, not just upon wake-up, but that I could – amplify it even beyond and then keep it as you know at a particular level uh for the longest period of time and mm-hmm. what factors would feed into it and and it was really interesting because we think about exercising in the morning is a great thing for everybody it's not for some people it is and some mm-hmm. people it drops their hrv and i found that it exercising in the eve not evening but late afternoon mm-hmm. was better for my hrv kind of peaks. But the other was looking at when I took my daughters to school, when I made time to be the parent that took them to school in the morning, my HRV out of all the variables I was looking at would would predict the highest HRV for the longest amount of time. So I changed my schedule. Isn't that fascinating? So it's fascinating. You start to learn resonance is, uh, you know, just the breathing frequency is one, but, but it, it's about understanding your system, your authentic system to put mm-hmm. you in a state of resonance both internally and from the external inputs. Yeah, you know, the relationship piece is really interesting, especially I see it with my kids as well. But sometimes, especially I've got two young kids, I've got a four year old and then a two year old. And so uh, if anybody who has a four year old and two year old or whoever has knows that uh, that can be difficult ages at times. And so sometimes 
they drop my HRV <laughs> reasonably so. But then other times too, and again, and this is aside from me modulating my respiratory rate, kind of even focusing on that. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll share a little bit of that here in this in, in just a second. But one of the things I've known is very similar to you. It's just like those close relationships. If I'm snuggling with my, my two little boys, or if I'm snuggling with my wife, if we're close, my HRV amplitude just like heightens so incredibly much. And what I've noticed too, and this is kind of going to the point that I was mentioning just a second ago, is that I've actually noticed, I don't know if I've conditioned this response. You tell me, this would be a great question for you, Lee, if you know. I've actually noticed that when I'm with them, and this probably is because I'm in such of a, a parasympathetic flow at that time, that I naturally will start breathing slower. Um, and so it's like this combination of like love and affection yes. and closeness and oxytocin, like yes. combined with like these changes in the cardiorespiratory cycle. Like, do you slow your breathing down or like even if it's subconsciously, like when you're in those situations? A hundred percent. But here's the thing and, and that is so fascinating is that we can draw upon these experiences, Jay, and we can use them during our breathing moments to mm-hmm. essentially shift our body faster. So yeah. What I have found with my clients is, so uh, memories, um, snuggling with with your kids, and maybe there was a particular memory over this weekend. Mm-hmm. You were all snuggled and, and under the covers, and it was very sweet, and your heart just just felt so in flow. But your heart remembers that, yeah. and then for you, even in moments when you're not snuggled with them under the covers, even stressful moments or moments of doubt or or just moments where you want to amplify your, your physiology for a specific reason, you can bring up that memory from the heart. And it's not cognitive. It's, it's focusing on how your heart felt, that incredible love, and then using your resonant breathing and and being able to activate that resonant state even faster when you pair that specific physiological memory. It's not just cognitive right. with the inhale and let go of the rest of the world. Hey, Jay here. Hate to interrupt this show, but I have to tell you about our amazing sponsor for today's episode. Yeah, it's Hanu Health. That's H-A-N-U Health, my company. And I've got good news and I've got bad news. So the bad news is is that I'm going to have to be quite cryptic for a while as to what we're building, but what I can say is that it is in the space of health technology, and it's going to be revolutionary. Just think about this show. You have myself, who is an expert in heart rate variability, and Patrick, who is an expert in breath work, and he is one of our primary advisors. Hmm... And what's the good news? Well, even though you have no idea about what the company is offering as a product, we are offering an exclusive VIP waiting list so that you can be the first to know about it. Not only will you reserve your spot in line, you will also gain access to our informative newsletter. We will update you on where we are as a company and provide special incentives and promotions. All you need to do is go to hanuhealth.com slash waitlist. That is hanuhealth.com slash waitlist. I promise you will not want to miss out on what is to come. We are building the biohacker's dream, but it will be useful for every human being on this planet. I'm, I'm not even speaking in hyperbole. I'm serious. Every human could benefit from what we are making. So again, head on over to hanuhealth.com slash waitlist to get your spot now, and I will just, you know, leave you with bated breath. Yeah, it is so incredible, kind of the relationship there. And and it's not something that I really noticed until I had kids, like prior to kids. Like, I just didn't make as much of that connection. It's not to say that you can't make that connection if you don't have kids. Um, But for me, that's where it kind of really started to started to kind of sink in. And and I've had this happen on multiple occasions where I'll be practicing, um, you know, just intentional breathing, HRV biofeedback, like in the morning. Um, And I'm not kind of cognitively like thinking about like my kids or like my wife or relationships. Relationships, um, but then all of a sudden, like in just me, like engaging that part of my system, I'll just have like these flashes of like my kid's face, or them smiling, or I'll hear them laughing. And I know that might sound a little esoteric to people who are like listening to this, but it's so interesting because like when that starts to kind of like come into the brain when I'm engaging in these practices, then I'll see my amplitude of heart rate variability go up even higher than just respiration alone. So it's that kind of demonstrates 
illustrates that there's not just kind of this one way street here. It's bi-directional in nature um, that you can kind of like utilize those memories like you mentioned to help uh, when you're engaging in biofeedback training. But also, too, there's the inverse of kind of like you'll engage in it and it will help to kind of bring these things up, uh, which is just such an, a, a powerful tool and, and, and technique. And so, yeah, it's one of those things that like if people have not started engaging in resonant breathing, if they've not started engaging in biofeedback, like it, it, it's hopefully we've sold it at least just initially kind of on, on, on that end. Thanks for listening to the Hanu Health Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. This podcast would not happen without listeners and supporters like you. And the best way to support us and the show is to head on over to iTunes and provide us with a five-star review. This helps us reach others and spread the good word of breathing and stress resiliency. If we read your five-star review on air, please reach out to podcast at hanuhealth.com with your name and mailing address, and we will send you some sweet Hanu gear. Until next time, breathe better and stress less. Oh,